leave me but the shoes on my feet and I'm willing to go out there and live on bread and water the rest of my life so help me God I'll preach it if I have to preach it from the street corner but take not thy holy spirit from me wow what can you say that's that's friendship with the holy spirit hello this is david diga hernandez and i'm joined by my good friend mr steven moctezuma hello this is a reaction video to powerful ministry moments of miss Catherine coleman before we begin, make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV and click that notification bell when you do subscribe so that you can receive notices when we put out new content. We release teachings and sermons on the Holy Spirit, prayer, spiritual warfare, and such topics. We also put out videos that show the power of the Holy Spirit at work. And of course, we also feature the worship ministry of Mr. Stephen Moctezuma. When I was 13 years old, I read a biography on Catherine Coleman and her life story greatly impacted my life. Not only have I been directly impacted by her life through her videos and audio sermons and books, but I've also been indirectly impacted by her life through the people that she has influenced. Now, I'll try not to pause it too much, but I'll add commentary where I see it necessary. Let's get right into this. when it comes to the mighty third person of the Trinity, then the manifestation of his power, then the, the gifts of the Spirit, more than the healing of the physical. There is a communion. There's a fellowship. The one who takes the loneliness out of your life. You can trust him. Jesus trusted him. And he knew him better than I've ever known him. And I feel that if Jesus could trust him, surely I can trust him. I can trust him to lead me. I can trust him to guide me. I can trust him to protect me and to overshadow me with his divine presence. Such magnetism on this woman. I mean, you can really sense a strong anointing as she's talking. Now, I knew people who knew Miss Catherine Coleman personally, and many of them told me the same thing. They said, she didn't pretend to be spiritual. She was spiritual. And I think that's a powerful testimony, and definitely you can see that coming through as she speaks. One day I just looked up and said, wonderful Jesus, I don't have a thing, not a thing. But if you can take nothing and use it, I offer you that nothing. I know I love you. All I can give you is my love. I'll give you every ounce of strength in my body. That's all I have to give you. To this very hour, I have never forgotten for whence I've come. There isn't a day of my life that I don't pray that same prayer and mean it with all of my heart. All I have is my love. If you can use it, take it. I die a thousand deaths. All you see is the white dress. All you see is this. Don't 
go to another person, try to describe it, don't. And I know that's all you've seen. I die a thousand deaths before I walk out on a platform. I don't care where it is. I don't care how small or how large the auditorium or how the size of the crowd. I die a thousand deaths. Okay, so a couple things here. Number one, Miss Catherine Coleman spoke of the surrendered life, the death to self. We so rarely hear this message today, and I think it's important that we begin to hear it again. That was one of the things that she said that most impacted me, that she dies a thousand deaths before stepping onto the platform. It's all him. When she says, Lord, if you can use nothing, here it is. I related to that. As I read those words in her biography, I related to that. I would say, Lord, I don't really have any special talents. There's really nothing about me that stands out. So I can't offer you much. But if you can use nothing, here it is. And that certainly is hopefully a running theme in my life. The second thing that I noticed, and this is something that she spoke of often, was all you see is the white dress. And I think I can relate in some ways to that because I feel like sometimes people see the cameras, the lights, the live streams, they see the services, and they kind of see you at your best for those couple hours a week that you're ministering. But people don't know what goes on behind that. They don't see the death to self. They don't see the struggles, the trials. And it's only Jesus who sustains us. I like to say that if it weren't for the grace of God, if it weren't for the presence of Jesus in my life, I would be a thousand pieces on the floor. And truly, I mean that. Steve, anything you want to add to that? I think you can really see how genuine and how much love she has for the Lord mm. when she speaks. She speaks, I mean, she speaks with conviction. So it's uh, very powerful to see. All right, let's see the next one here. Doctor, what is this? This little 11-year-old boy had rheumatoid arthritis. Affect, affecting his hips and his knees and his uh, ankles, wrists, and this is his wheelchair. You mean this is the little boy's wheelchair? Yes. Honey, is this? <laughs> wow. This is the most beautiful child. He's so happy. I would have come to Las Vegas just for the healing of this youngster. How old are you, honey? Eleven. Tell the people how old you are. Eleven. What's your name? Eleven. I want you to see this little wheelchair. Look, this little wheelchair for, made for a little 11 year old boy. Does nothing hurt? Doesn't it hurt? You mean it doesn't hurt? Okay, take your wheelchair. You push it, honey. Go on. There he goes. This is holy ground. Oh, God, love it. I want to see you riding your bike tomorrow. Tomorrow he'll be riding his bicycle. So several things we can comment there. First of all, when she says, if it was just for you that I came to Las Vegas, I would come. I think she's being sincere when she says that. She had such a love for people. You could see the love of the Holy Spirit beaming through her as she looked at the people. The second thing to note is that she would have medical doctors there to help verify the healings. And I thought that was very powerful about her ministry. Now, some people are of the belief that she didn't want her services televised. This was not the case. In fact, she wanted to televise more of her services, but her producers, I believe over at CBS, insisted that no one would want to watch a church service on television, mm. which is why we have so few of her services on camera. Oh, that was just a powerful moment, though. I love the way that she kind of shows the people a little bit more of faith by having the little boy push his own wheelchair. Yeah, that was great. I mean, that's such a faith stir. That's, that's powerful. And the little boy's face lighting up mm -hmm. once he was healed. Tremendous. Softly begin the choir, Very last 
the great oratory, adore him and worship So, Steve, one of the things about her ministry that I pray is true of ours is that in her services, the presence of Jesus would become real. Mm -hmm. She used to say, when Jesus becomes more real to you than your sickness, you'll be healed. Mm. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He points to Jesus. And in those moments of worship, you notice she's talking about Jesus. She's pointing them to Jesus. She's trying to get them with the eyes of their heart to look at Jesus. And in those moments, that's when his presence becomes tangible. Now, we actually still use this song to Mm -hmm. this day in our services. You'll hear Steve singing it. You'll hear me singing it. I kind of relate to Catherine Coleman a little bit there in that neither of us can really sing, but we still sing anyway on the platform. Thank God we have Steve there in the services. Steve, how many miracles have we seen in those services when singing that same chorus. Countless, and there's something behind that song. I mean, the the simplicity and the beauty and the elegance of it, I mean, countless miracles. I think that's it, the simplicity. You kind of just forget about having to memorize all the words and you're able to just sing it to the Lord. So yeah, tremendous anointing, tremendous presence on those meetings. You can see great crowds have gathered there. People would drive for miles, fly in from across the country. They would pack auditoriums by the thousands and people still wouldn't be able to get into the building. So definitely that's the draw there for sure, the presence of the Holy Ghost. Cancer of both hips of the bone and that's her wheelchair. Is there no pain there at all? Dear Jesus, I worship you. As the power of the Holy Ghost has gone through this body, as the power of God has gone through this body. That's power. As the fire of the Holy Ghost. These people, for those who are new here, they are not 
fainting. This is the power of God. <laughs> understand it? I don't understand it. Sometimes I think these old physical bodies of ours are just not geared for this much power. Yeah. This is power, believe me. Did you expect to be out of that wheelchair in this place today? No, I said you'd be in there for a long time. No, she said I expected to be in that wheelchair for a long wow. time. So this is something we get asked about a lot too, the slain in the spirit phenomenon. This is simply a temporary physical reaction to the manifested tangible power of the Holy Spirit. I can't really explain to you why people fall over, but we know it's the power of God. People experience his presence to such degrees that they're unable to stand. It's a real phenomenon. We've had people in our meetings that come up on the platform, go out under the power, and then when they get picked up and I ask them what they're feeling, they're looking around going, I can't believe this is real. I can't believe this is real. We had one guy mm. get up and he said, this isn't real. This isn't real. This isn't real. And yes, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. Certainly one of those phenomenons that followed her ministry. I'm not afraid of Satan. I can use the same weapon on Satan that Jesus used. It is written. I can face Satan. I can face all the forces of hell and use the same weapon on him that Jesus did. I fear no man. But one fear. Lest I grieve the Holy Spirit. lest this anointing shall leave. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He can take everything that I've got. He can strip me of everything I've got. Leave in me but the clothing to cover my body. Leave in me but the shoes on my feet peach and I'm willing to go out there and live on bread and water the rest of my life so help me God I'll preach it if I have to preach it from the street corner but take not thy holy spirit from me wow I mean, what can you say? That's, that's friendship with the Holy Spirit. One of her greatest fears was that she would grieve the Holy Spirit. She so loved the Holy Spirit. And that's my prayer, that you and I would be friends of the Holy Spirit, that we would know him that way, that we would love him and honor him. Catherine Coleman left a powerful legacy. Um, as you can see, you can definitely tell that there's something on her and it's the Holy Spirit. And I think she paved the way for many people to know who he is and to understand his power in a real tangible way. And I think that's such a powerful thing. She's, uh, she's a legend, she is. One of the things I rarely talk about is the dream I had of Miss Catherine Coleman. In my dream, I was taken to her office. I'm standing outside her door. I see her name on the window of her door. And then when I opened the door, I saw Miss Catherine Coleman standing there with her back facing me. She was wearing that beautiful white dress. I looked around the room. I could see books. I saw a typewriter. And then she turned around. And when she turned around, she had the biggest smile on her face. And her arms opened really wide. And she simply said, David, how are you? And she gave me a big hug. And the moment that she wrapped her arms around me, I felt this intense heat come over me. I felt currents of electric power pulsing up and down my being. And then I woke up. I don't know what to make of that dream, but I thought it would be interesting to share. Well, that does it for this reaction video to powerful ministry moments of Catherine Coleman. Don't forget to subscribe to Encounter TV on YouTube. Click that notification bell when you do subscribe. 
As I said, we release teachings and sermons on the Holy Spirit, prayers, spiritual warfare, and so much more. We release videos of the power of the Holy Spirit in action. We also feature the worship ministry of Mr. Stephen Makazuma. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.